Now, one of the biggest points of fascination with the subject of watches is the concept of low light visibility or their ability to glow in the dark. In this video, we look at essentially everything you should know regarding the subject of luminescent material, including its murky and radioactive history, the several different forms of luminous material types and names, and shots of showing several examples of how each work and last over different periods of time with leading brands from Seiko, Citizen, Tudor, Rolex, and more. Let's jump in. To start, we probably need to discuss a word you see getting thrown around a lot when discussing the subject, and that is loom. This is a term that is enthusiast shorthand for luminescent material. That to put simply is a material applied most often in the form of paint to the dial and hands with the intended purpose of making the watch more legible in dark conditions or even murky underwater environments in the case of dive watches. The history of loom dates back to the early 1900s when watchmakers began to experiment with luminescent paint first on pocket watches and later wrist watches with demand picking up precipitously during the First World War. During this early period of the 20th century, we saw the rise of radium, which offered a self-illuminating, bright and long-lasting glow, but in decades to follow, it was later to be found to have a fatal flaw of being radioactive and could cause serious harm to the wearer and those working on the watches as radium ages to produce radon gas, which is a cancer-causing agent. For another example of its devastating effects, I would also call attention to women of the early 1900s known as radium radium girls who worked in factories to apply radium paint to watches, where many unfortunately died as a result of negligent instructions being provided, which led to ingesting of the material. Two other radioluminescent materials that came following the industry's move away from radium was promethium and tritium. Starting with promethium, it made an appearance briefly in the earlier portion of the 20th century, which also was radioactive, but to a much lesser extent. Its downfall really came down to a less sinister reason, as its half-life was only 2.62 years, making it not a viable option for watch dials going forward. Starting in the 1960s, brands turned to a material that became a new industry standard for decades with tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen that offered a more respectable glowing lifespan of 12.32 years, as well as a much lower radioactive signature. When you see an older watch from virtually the 1960s onward, including a number of vintage Rolex models, the faded tan color of older luminescent material is in fact aged tritium paint. And you could argue this is the most sought after patina in the world of watches when it comes to Rolex. Still radioactive to some extent, tritium-based paints on dials, which were nearly ubiquitous, were completely moved away from in 1998, having to transition to tritium gas tubes rather than paint, which we will talk about a bit later. Now, filling the immediate gaping void were Luminova and later Superluminova, which were actually developed in Japan in the early 1990s before becoming a joint Japanese-Swiss venture in 1998, just in time to take over for tritium's exit in the market, with even Rolex famously making the switch. Compared to all these radioluminescent materials, meaning they are capable of producing their glow without being charged by a light source thanks to the innate radioactivity, Superluminova operates more like a battery, absorbing light energy and then producing a glow afterward. Superluminova was a breakthrough for the industry for its non-radioactive properties and its ability to not deteriorate as fast as something like tritium. But now with that history out of the way, let's now focus on some of the most common different loom types in the market in 2023, starting with Luminova and its many variations as they are the most common options you have and you're going to see. Luminova, developed in 1993 by Nimoto & Co., a Japanese company, Luminova was the trade name for the initial use of strontium aluminate-based chemical compounds for luminescence and watchmaking. And as we previously mentioned, this light charge compound is safe and offers no radioactive signature. However, with tritium still being used by many brands in the 1990s, it took some time before for it to take off right at that 1998 year. Now, when Tritium was fully banned in 1998, the owners of Luminova joined forces with a Swiss company found to be Luminova AG, also known today as RC Tritech, the producer of the vast majority of loom in the Swiss industry. While the actual material differences between Luminova and Superluminova are murky at best, what is clear is that Luminova seems to be the trade name for the material when it's made in Japan, while Superluminova refers to the range of compounds being produced in Switzerland. The Japanese arm of the company also seems Seems much more involved in industrial non-watchmaking applications, including signage, whereas RC Tritech is primarily involved in watchmaking. It is also important to mention that Superluminova, like many Bosch movements, have different grades.
grades. Depending on how much luminescence you are looking for, there are different grades of superluminova. As you would expect, the more glow you get, the more expensive the material is going to be. Going from the dimmest to the brightest, they are standard, grade A, and then recently introduced X1 that now sets the standard for brightness. In addition to different grades, superluminova also is available in a wide variety of different pigments or colors, including options you may have already heard of, including C3, which is considered the brightest, and BGW9, with the most pigments being available in multiple different grades as well. A recent example of a watch that showcased this with these different hues is the Mito Commander Day of the Dead. Now, despite there being some great names in this field and leaders like Superluminova, there are still going to be vertically integrated brands that love to do as much as possible in-house, including Rolex, who introduced its own luminescent material known as Chromalite in 2008. Now, glowing neon blue instead of the green Superluminova previously utilized by the Crown, some have argued Chromalite is most likely just a rebadged Superluminova product being produced on a proprietary basis. But given the well-publicized secrecy of Rolex, we'll never know the answer to this but it's no doubt one of the best forms of loom in the entire industry, glowing with incredible incandescence. Next, we have a brand commonly associated with having their own incredible loom, and that is Seiko, which produces its own luminescent material under the Lumabrite trade name. Glowing green in most instances, virtually every sporty Seiko model offers exceptional Lumabrite loom, with some of the standouts coming in the diving collection, as you probably would expect. Probably the best example, though, will come from the Monster, the Turtle, and the Samurai, and Seiko claims that a two minute charge in bright light will make Lumabrite glow for up to five hours. It wouldn't even be fair to say that even affordable Seiko models stack up well, even compared to luxury watches using Superluminova. Pretty impressive considering the price point for many of these Seiko watches are going to be under $500. So as mentioned, tritium in its painted form was outlawed in 1998, but tritium still plays a huge role in the industry nowadays in the form of tritium gas tubes. The GTLS process involves inserting small amounts of H3 glass into tiny narrow glass tubes, which are less permeable than a watch crystal over the dial, and also have been treated on their inner surfaces with luminous powder that is activated by the electrons in the gas. Often used for gun sights and other tactical and industrial applications, tritium tubes offer long-lasting legibility that doesn't require light source for charging, instead glowing constantly for 12.32 years, which at that point, the hands and dial will lose their luminous essence. There is at least some radiation inherent in the gas, but it is completely blocked both in its position inside the tubes and inside the watch, making these watches safe for extended wear, and is going to be utilized by brands like Marathon and Ball Watches. So now that we've gone through some of these different major players, what are some different looms to be aware of? What I wanted to do now is look at some different examples of them in controlled lighting environments, pretty natural. We're not going to manipulate this to a crazy degree and show some different watches and how they react in different lighting conditions uh, in a stable environment over a period of time. So for this, we have a Seiko Prospects, we have a Citizen Pro Master, a Marathon G-SAR, a Tudor Black Bay 58, and a Rolex Mariner. Now, one point before before we look at these models is that beyond the material itself, it is also important to consider how much luminous material is applied to these watches. For example, a Tissot PRX has loom that is applied in a much smaller quantity than the dive-oriented watches that you're going to be looking at here, leading to a different level of effectiveness. Further, you have many brands that will artificially age Superluminova, think of something like Hamilton with their khaki fields, which will also impact the ability for the loom to charge and release light. Now shifting to the watches at hand, we will shoot all of them following the same camera settings and will not artificially change the saturation to the images. So it's relatively raw, so you can get an idea and more accurate picture of what you're going to get. All of them are going to be charged around 30 seconds, and we're going to show some pictures and time lapse here. One at 30 seconds after charging, a minute after charging, and then five minutes minutes after charging. First, you have the Seiko Prospects. 30 seconds after charging, you're going to see you know, still very bright, little tail off at the beginning because that's where most of that light is going to be emitted. Then one minute, still very effective. Most of the fade of the brightness here is going to happen in the first couple of minutes. Five minutes, you're starting to see that bigger fall off, but still in a completely dark environment, 
going to be usable. Next, you have the Citizen Fugu. This is a model that right along with Seiko is very good, class leading for its price range. And across the board, pretty much right there with Seiko step for step. At the one minute mark and the 30 second mark, it's going to shine very brightly. Five minutes, still going to be there to an extent, but definitely going to start to curve off. This is where you're again going to see most of that fall off. Still effective enough in complete darkness, but you're going to need a charge there. Also a thing to consider with many divers in these very dark environments, they still will have a flashlight. So to charge their watch, they will do that uh, periodically throughout their dive. And this also goes with people in caves and people spelunking as an example. Then you have the Tudor Black Bay 58, pretty standard here with the 30 seconds and one minute going to shine exceptionally. Some of the best loom in the price category featuring super lumen over here. Then transitioning to that next tier of five minutes, start to see more of that steep fall off, but going to show here that Seiko Citizen, just because you're paying more money doesn't mean that it can't hang with the best of them here. But I think another thing to show off here is that loom is not a feature of just luxury watches only. I think if you see what Seiko and Citizen are able to perform at here compared to some of these more luxury watches, you see that they do an exceptional job. Then you have the Rolex Mariner with this Chromalite, going to be pretty straightforward here, just following along just to show you what it's like. Still very solid with that 30 seconds to a minute. The blue hue is very striking and something synonymous with Rolex in the contemporary collection. Five minutes, similar to what you were seeing with the Tudor. And then just to throw this in there to give an example of something with tritium gas tubes, I wanna look at the Marathon GSAR. Now the interesting thing here, let's look at the 30 seconds, we'll look at the one minute you're noticing that this is a constant illuminating material. So it's not going to need a charge. There was no charge necessary, this is constant. So you'll also see after five minutes, it is going to be exactly the same. When you're in complete darkness, that's where tritium is going to give the biggest upside. When you're in a well-lit environment, you're not gonna have the same just kind of crazy glow that you'll have with Superluminova as you step out of say the sunlight as an example. So for tritium, the peaks are not as high, but the valleys are not as low. But all right, guys, that is everything you need to know about luminescent materials in watches. So if you enjoyed the video, you found this interesting, please give it a thumbs up. I really would appreciate that. This was a bit more to put together here, and I don't know how this is gonna resonate with you all, so that's a great indication that you like sometimes going into more of the nerdy stuff and more educational content like this. I really would appreciate it. Also, definitely check out teddyballister.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. How we're able to fund all of these productions is through selling watches on our site. I know you can buy a watch essentially anywhere nowadays, but how we're able to keep doing what we're doing here is through selling watches. So we would love to have your business because it allows us to keep doing what we're doing and we love what we do here. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.